All right, so here's another example. Um, this one is an example of a second order differential equation. Um, one that you might encounter um, if you were studying things like simple harmonic motion, right? Um, here's, uh, think of a mass on a spring. If you go through, if you've taken a physics course and you play around, you'll find that you run into equations like this all the time, right? Um, and, and to be honest, most of physics ends up leading you to differential equations at one point or another. So it's very important if you're interested in physics to know how to solve a differential equation. We do, of course, in later differential equations courses, not in this calculus course, but in a differential equations course, you would again learn systematic methods for solving systems like this. Okay? Um, we don't have those methods at our fingertips, so we'll, we'll try to apply a certain amount of guesswork, right? And so we say, okay, well, what, what is this equation saying? It's saying that the second derivative of some function is equal to minus 9 times the original function, right? And so we think back to all the functions that we sort of first encounter um, in, in our first calculus course when we're learning derivatives, and we say, okay, um, do we know any functions where when you take the derivative twice, you get the negative of the thing you started with? And you think about it for a little bit, and you realize that, oh, yes, there are two such functions, right? Um, sine works, right? Sine x. So if I take the derivative of sine, I get cosine. If I take the derivative again, I get back to negative sine. Okay, so sine x works. Okay. Cos x works. Right. Derivative of cos gives you negative sine. Derivative of negative sine gives you negative cos. Um, but of course, you still have to get that 9. Well, again, chain rule comes in, right? 9 is 3 times 3. So if we put a 3 in there, right, for either of those, that's going to give me the job, right? If I do this, then y prime is 3 cos 3x, right? y double prime, I get minus 3 times 3, I get minus 9 sine 3x, which is minus 9 times y, right? Same story over here. y prime is going to be minus 3 sine 3x, y double prime minus 9 cos 3x, which is minus 9y, and we're back to where we started. And actually, it turns out um, any sort of linear combination of these will work. So a general solution that does the job is going to be to take y to be some constant, maybe call it a times sine 3x, and some other constant b times cos 3x, right? You get a sinusoid. Um, and you might have studied in, in high school or, again, perhaps in a physics course, these methods for manipulating these things, right? There's a way to kind of rewrite this as a single either sine or cosine function where you introduce some phase to account for these a's and b's. Um, but, well, you kind of need to know what a and b are before you can pull that off. And a and b could be any number, right? How do you come up with a values for a and b? Well, again, possibly from either, you know, initial conditions, right? If, I, if I'm thinking of this maybe as like motion on a spring or something like that, right? If I know an initial position and I know an initial speed, right? The initial speed determines y prime, I can, I can recover the values for a and b. Um, so there, there are those sorts of games that you can play, right? Um, so general solution turns out does look like this, right? Um, values for a and b are determined by initial conditions. Um, in another course, you'd learn exactly how to come up with this sort of answer.